good morning children so welcome back to this session of english class where we will discuss the second part of the video made on the topic or the chapter of the rat trap by the author selma legalov children i have already told you about uh, selma legalov now let's directly move on to the chapter but first uh, let's discuss these expressions one by one so first expression is keep body and soul together it means earn enough to get your perfect livelihood next is plod along the road so it means walking along the road impenetrable prison means prison which cannot be broken eased his way it means make his things easier things have gone downhill it means the time has got deteriorated or now it or it's not a good time or means uh, it means nothing is good right now hunger gleamed in his eyes gleam means shine so when if you are suppose hungry for quite a long quite a long time then if suddenly food comes in front of you so hunger definitely will be shining in your eyes unwanted joy joy which you have never expected not at a haughty consent haughty means proudy consent means yes so when you proudly say yes suppose your friend invites you for some thing and you said yes i will come but very proudly so that is haughty consent fallen into a line of thought it means that uh, think about some particular thing and that thought continues so i think now these expressions are clear let's move on to the chapter once upon a time there was a man who went around selling small red traps of fire he made them himself at odd moments from the material he got by begging in the stores or at the big farms but even so the business was not so specially profitable so he had to resort to both begging and petty thievery to keep body and soul together even so his clothes were in rags his cheeks were sunken and hunger gleamed in his eyes no one can imagine how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond who plods along the road left to his own meditations but one day this man had fallen into a line of thought which really seemed to him entertaining he had naturally been thinking of his rat traps when suddenly he was struck by the idea that the whole you know world about him or you can say the whole world with its lands and seas its cities and villages was nothing but a big rat trap it had never existed for any other purpose than to set baits for people it offered riches and joys shelter and food heat and clothing exactly as a rat trap offered cheese and pork and as soon as anyone let himself be tempted to touch the bait it closed it on him and then everything came to an end yes children we are talking about a man who went around selling small rat traps of wire actually he made them himself but his business was not profitable so he had to sometimes beg and sometimes steal to keep himself alive his clothes were all in rags his cheeks were sunken and hunger could be noticed in his eyes his life was sad and monotonous he had no company one day he was walking along the road and suddenly he had an idea what is this world isn't it a big rat trap and it set baits 
baits in hindi means chara when we catch fish we just have a bait in our fishing line so he said that it that the world said baits for people and what is the bait that offering riches joys shelter food heat and clothing exactly as the rat trap offered cheese and pork and as soon as anyone let himself be tempted to touch the bait the rat trap closed in on him and then everything came to an end so he said that if as soon as you touch all these worldly things which incite you then comes the end and you are inside the rat trap the world had of course never been very kind to him so it gave him unwanted joy to think a lot of it in this way it became a cherished pastime of his during many dreary plodings to think of people he knew who had let themselves be caught in the dangerous snare and of others who were still circling around the bait so his life was never easy so thinking like this gave him joy as world in fact was not good for him so by thinking in this kind of thought line he found himself in a happy state of mind so he thought like that one dark evening as he was trudging along the road he caught sight of a little gray cottage by the road side and he knocked on the door to ask shelter for the night nor was he refused instead of the sour faces which ordinarily met him the owner was an old man without wife or child and was happy to get someone to talk to his in his loneliness immediately he put the porridge pot on the fire and gave him supper then he carved off such a big slice from his tobacco roll that it was enough both for the stranger's pipe and his own finally he got out an old pack of cards and played mazoilis with his guest at the bedtime so one dark evening the peddler or rat trap seller so children don't confuse in exam peddler and rat trap seller are both one for one person this two words have been used for one person so one dark evening he was walking slowly with heavy steps when he saw a little gray cottage on the road side he knocked at the door to ask shelter for the night and owner was an old as well as a good man he had no wife or child and he was happy to get someone as company in his loneliness otherwise what he used to get that is refusal so that man was a very nice one he served him porridge for supper and gave him tobacco for his pipe and then he got an old pack of cards and played the game mazulis till bedtime the old man was just as generous with his confidence as with his porridge and tobacco the guest was informed at once that in his days of prosperity his host had been a crofter at ramzo iron works and had worked on the land now that he was no longer able to do day labor it was his cow which supported him yes that was bossy was that bossy was extraordinary she could give milk for the creamery every day and last month he had received all 30 kroner in payment the stranger must have seemed incredulous for the old man got up and went to the window took down a leather pouch which hung on a nail in the very window frame and picked out three wrinkled 10 kroner bills these he held up before the eyes of his guest nodding knowingly so the host or the old man who had given shelter to the peddler had been a crofter at ramzo iron works crofter i'll explain you that person who works in the iron mill so he was uh, working as a crofter in iron ramzo iron works in days of prosperity now he had worked on the land as he was old he was unable to do day labor so he had kept a cow which supported him and this extraordinary cow could give milk for the creamery every day he informed the stranger that the last month he had received all the 30 of 30 kroner in payment so the 
old man was so simple that he even told the peddler that he had received 30 kroner in payment and he showed to his guest also three wrinkled 10 kroner notes which he had taken out of a leather pouch hanging on a nail in the window frame. So after sewing the 30 kroners money, the old man put them or stuffed them back into the pouch. The next day both men got up in good season. The crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow and the other man probably thought he should not stay in bed when the head of the house had gotten up. They left the cottage at the same time. The crofter locked the door and put the key in his pocket. The man with the red trap said, Goodbye and thank you, and thereupon each went his own way. But half an hour later, the red trap peddler stood again before the door. He did not try to get in. However, he only went up to the window, smashed a pane, stuck in his hand, and got hold of the pouch with the 30 kroner. He took the money and thrust it into his own pocket. Then he hung the leather pouch very carefully back in its place and went away. So the next day both men got up early. The crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow and the other man did not want to stay in bed when his host had himself got up. Then they both left the court at the same time. The crofter locked the door and put the key in his pocket. The man with the rat traps or the rat trap seller or the peddler said goodbye and thanked his host and went away. Half an hour later the rat trap peddler returned. He broke the window pane, stuck in his hand and got hold of the pouch with the 30 kroner bills or the money hanging with the nail on the wall. He took out the money and thrust it into his pocket and then hung the leather pouch very carefully back in its place and went away. As he walked along with the money in his pocket, he felt quite pleased with his smartness. He realized, of course, that at the first he dared not to continue in the public highway, but must turn off the road into the woods. During the first hours, this caused him so difficult, no difficulty. Later in the day, it became worse, for it was a big and confusing forest, which he had gotten into. He tried to be sure to walk in a definite direction, but the path twisted back and forth so strangely. He walked and walked without coming to an end of the wood and finally he realized that he had only been walking around the same part of the forest. All at once he recalled his thought about the world and the rat trap. Now his own turn had come. He had let himself be fooled by a bait and had been caught. The whole forest with its trunks and branches, its thickets and fallen logs closed in upon him like an impenetrable prison from which he could not never escape. So the peddler or the rat trap seller felt very happy and thought, oh, I am very smart. But then he realized that he dared not continue on the public highway. So he took to the woods. Woods means jungle. And he got into a big and confusing forest. He kept on, walk he kept on walking without coming to the end of the forest. And he realized that he had only been walking around the same part of the forest. And he thought that he had let himself be fooled by a bait and had been caught. The whole forest seemed to him like an impenetrable prison from which he could never escape. So children, the rat trap seller or the peddler who thought the world to be a rat trap was now got caught himself in that rat trap while the bait was 30 kroner bill or the money. It was late in December darkness was already descending over the forest. This increased the danger 
and increased also his gloom and despair. Finally, he saw no way out and he sank down on the ground, tired to death, thinking that his last moment had come. But just as he laid his head on the ground, he heard a sound, a hard regular thumping. There was no doubt as to what that was. He raised himself. Those are the hammer strokes from an iron mill, he thought. There must be people nearby. He summoned all his strength, got up and staggered in the direction of the sound. The Ramzo iron works, which are now closed down, were not so long ago a large plant with smelter, rolling mill and forge. In the summertime, long lines of heavily loaded barges and scows slid down the canal, which led to a large inland lake. And in the winter time, the roads near the mill were black from all the coal dust which sifted down from the big charcoal crates. So, it was late in December. Darkness increased. The danger as also his gloom and despair. So it was December time and uh, he was alone in the forest. Danger was increasing and his gloom, sadness or hopelessness was also increasing. He could not find any way out. So he sank down on the ground and he was quite tired. Suddenly he heard the thumping of something and he heard, yeah actually, in fact it is the sound of hammer strokes. So he collected all his strength, got up and staggered to the direction of the sound. The Ramzo ironworks which were now closed down sometimes long ago not so long ago it was a large plant where every activity of the industry used to take place and in the summer time heavy barges and scows were there which slid down the canal which led to a snake inland lake and in the winter time coal dust was seen and charcoal crates were there During one of the long, large, uh, long dark evening just before Christmas, the master smith and his helper sat in the dark forge near the furnace waiting for the pig iron, which had been put in the fire to be ready to put on the anvil. Every now and then, one of them got up to stir the glowing mass with a long iron bar, returning in a few moments, dripping with perspiration, though, as was the custom, he wore nothing but a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes all the time. There were many sounds to be heard in the forge. The big bellows groaned and the burning of coal cracked. The fireball shoveled, charcoal with the moth, the furnace, the great deal of clatter. Outside roared the waterfall and a sharp north wind whipped the rain against the bricked tile roof. It was probably on account of all this noise that the blacksmith did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge. until he stood close up to the furnace. Surely it was nothing unusual for poor vagabonds without any better shelter for the night to be attached to. The forge by the glow of light which escaped through the sooty panes and to come in to warm themselves in front of the fire. So there were many sounds. And he reached the forge where the master smith, blacksmith and his helper were near the furnace and they were waiting for the pig iron to be ready to put on the anvil. There were many sounds like big bellows groan, burning of coal crack, the fire boy shovel charcoal with a great deal of clatter. The waterfall roaring, sharp north wind whipped the rain against a big, big tile roof. On account of all these noises, the blacksmith who was working there, he did not notice that a man had opened the gate and entered the forge until the stranger stood close up to the furnace. Vagabond actually means a wanderer. So Vagabond in fact means wanderer.
so the blacksmith could not notice until the rat trap seller or the peddler came near the furnace and uh, he knew that uh, many times these kind of vagabonds would come to that place to get fire warmth and some food the blacksmith glanced only casually and indifferently at intruder he looked the way people of his type usually did with a long beard that he ragged and with a bunch of red traps dangling on his chest he asked permission to stay and the black master blacksmith nodded a haughty consent without honoring him with a single word the tramp did not say anything either he had not come there to talk but only to warm himself and sleep in those days the ramzo iron mill was owned by a very prominent iron master whose greatest ambition was to ship out good iron to the market he watched both night and day to see that the work was done as well as possible and at this at this very moment he came into the forge on one of the his nightly rounds of inspection so children the blacksmith gave a casual look to the intruder who was having a long beard dirty ragged clothes and bunch of rat traps hanging on his chest then the peddler or the rat trap seller asked permission to stay and very proudly the blacksmith gave permission okay you can stay just then the iron master who owned the ramzo iron mill came into the forge on one of his nightly rounds of inspection so that uh, iron mill was owned by a very prominent iron master whose ambition actually was to sell good iron to the market so he used to work day and night so suddenly while the red trap seller had asked permission from the blacksmith to stay there for night suddenly the iron master came there as he used to take night rounds of inspection naturally the first thing he saw was a tall raga muffin who had eased his way so close to the furnace that steam rose from his wet rags the iron master did not follow the example of the blacksmiths who had hardly designed to look at the stranger he walked close up to him looked him over very carefully then tore off his slouch hat to get a better view of his face but of course it's you neil solof he said how do you look the man with the red traps had never before seen the iron master at ramso and did not even know what his name was but it occurred to him that if the fine gentleman thought he was an old acquaintance he might perhaps throw him a couple of kroner therefore he did not want to undeceive him all at once yes god knows things have gone downhill with me he said you should not have resigned from the regiment said the iron master that was a mistake if only i had still been in the service at that time it never would have happened well now of course you will come home with me to go along up to the manor house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade that however did not please the tramp so when the iron master or the owner of the mill looked at the rat trap seller he saw only dirty torn clothes and who had moved so close to the furnace to get heat that steam was rising from his wet clothes or you can say torn clothes he walked close up to him looked him very carefully but actually he was wearing a hat so he was not getting the full view so you know what armasa did he tore off the hat of the peddler to get a wide view and a better view and as he looked at the face of the red trap seller he said oh neils all off the man with the red traps or you can say the peddler had never seen the iron master at ramzo and did not ever know what his name was so it was the first time for the red trap seller 
to be there in the iron mill and he thought that if this person is saying to me nils olof it means he is thinking me someone else and probably the iron master might perhaps throw his old acquaintance a couple of dollar so you know to gain some money from iron master the rat trap seller pretended to be nils olof so he did not tell him what that he was mistaken the iron master had observed that he should not have resigned from the regiment so the rat trap seller said yes maybe things have gone downhill with me downhill with me means means earlier i was very happy nice rich man but now i am poor so that is the meaning of going downhill as i have already explained to you so the rat trap seller replied maybe the things have gone downhill with me so the iron master observed that he should not have resigned from the regiment then he asked a stranger to come home with him but the tram did not agree because he was a thief he was not nils olof and he was afraid that maybe he could be caught by the police and he thought of 30 kroner going up to the manor house manor actually m a n o r manor means farm house so he thought that going to the manor house would be like throwing himself into the lions den so and would no i couldn't think of it he said looking quite alarmed he thought of the 30 kroner to go up to the manor house would be like throwing himself voluntarily to the lions den so he only wanted a chance to sleep hid in the fort and then sneak away as inconspicuously as possible so the peddler only wanted that he must be allowed to sleep there in, near the fire and next morning he would sneak out sneak out means secretly move out the iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing please don't think that uh, i have such a fine home that you cannot show yourself there he said elizabeth is dead as you may already have heard my boys are abroad and there is no one at home except my oldest daughter and myself you were just saying that it was too bad we didn't have any company for christmas now come along with me and help us make the christmas food disappear a little faster but the stranger said no and no and no again and the iron master saw that he must given given means he must give his consent so what happened children the iron master assumed that uh, you know the red trap seller is feeling embarrassed embarrassed because of his dirty clothes so he, he himself assumed this thing you know the iron master himself assumed but actually it was not the case with the red trap seller he was a thief so he said in front of the red trap seller oh nils my wife elizabeth is dead and his boys or you can say the sons of uh, iron master abroad and he said i only live with my oldest daughter and then the iron master invited the stranger to spend christmas with them but the stranger said no three times but iron master said zern strong it looks as though captain von stell preferred to stay with you tonight zern strong he said to the master blacksmith and turned on his heel so the when the stranger said thrice no then the iron master a little bit made a fun and said zern strong the captain von stell captain von stell means nils olof or the red trap seller preferred to stay with you that night and he laughed to himself and went away zern storm is the name of master blacksmith so this question could be asked in exam who was zern storm so he was master blacksmith 
so he just commented that i think captain von steel wants to stay with you and he laughed and he went away and the blacksmith who knew him understood very well that he had not said his last word it was not more than half an hour before they heard the sound of carriage wheels outside the forest and a new guest came in but this time it was not the iron master he had sent his daughter apparently hoping that she would have better powers of persuasion than him himself she entered followed by a valet carrying on his arm a big fur coat she was not at all pretty but seemed modest and quite shy in the forge even thing everything was just as it had been earlier in the evening the master blacksmith and his apprentice still sat on their bench and iron and charcoal still glowed in the furnace so after saying that uh, the that uh, captain von steel or neil solov would like to stay with zernstrom he laughed and went away he went home and after some time he sent somebody and that somebody came after half an hour with the sounds of the carriage of wheels which was heard outside the forge the iron master's daughter came there followed by a valet carrying a big fur coat valet means attendant maybe driver and she introduced herself as edla will mention so she was a elder daughter of that iron master at that time the master blacksmith and his apprentice is still sat on their bench okay the boy who was throwing coal and the stranger was near the fire when edla will mention the daughter of and master came there the so children that's all in this part of video the third and the last part of the video or the chapter will be continued in the next video thank you